Welcome back guys. This is going to be the third part of our video tutorial series on, on creating Angular components. Uh, so um, we had three couple of examples in last video tutorial. In this video tutorial what I intend to do is I um, will be using HTTP to fetch some data. So we'll fetch some data from the server and basically do a binding. Okay. Let's go ahead and start our um, application here right now we have those three examples I just got rid of this one so um, very first thing we're gonna do you know if you guys follow if you guys have been following from my you know previous uh, tutorial our main module right now doesn't have any dependency specified since we would like to use SDTP let's go ahead and add that dependency here this is to because because we intend to use the SDTP request dollar sgtp angular um, service right okay we need to change that file that's the very first thing we have to do let's go ahead and save this one i'm going to i'm going to create one more a javascript file here and let's go ahead and rename this guy i'm going to follow the same naming convention and instead of let's say with first angular component with sgtp that's the name of our uh, javascript component well let's go ahead and change this instead of with controller this is going to be with sttp okay that is and then of course we can also go into our template file here um, and let's go ahead and create one more file with the same name as our component javascript name okay now we have our template specified and then we also have our javascript okay let's go ahead and modify this one the title, the idea about this one is basically we'll be fetching the, the, the some data, some JSON data that I have. It basically contains the all the countries of the and their code abbreviation of the world. So I'm going to give a title as the countries of the world, whatever. And one more property we need is we can define a property here called countries. Just for now, we can initialize it as an empty array. It's going to contain the array object. And then, of course, we're going to change. This is, we're going to use our own template for this one. We're going to say with SDTP. That's how we named our template here. And we're going to name this our controller as with SDTP. Okay. All right, so we got our template, we got our uh, component with HTTP, and then we're going to use this, you know, uh, another attribute controller as so that we can refer our model as a VM instead of the default provided by the Angular component. Okay. So, however, in this particular controller, we need to specify the dependency. So, let's see how we're going to specify. When we declare this, um, let's make a naming convention as a controller. So, you know, people who are looking at our code understand, oh, it is a part of the controller. That is a good naming convention, right? Um, all right. But however, when we call, we need to have this dependency specified. So how do, how can we you know inject this dependency here? So basically you know if you have been programming for a while, we can use this array kind of syntax here. And the first parameter of this one would be sttp, and second one would be the name of our controller, right? This is how we do it. So this is now this is this when this method gets invoked this. HTTP is automatically saturated, meaning it's all highly ready to use, ready to consume. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do here, let's go ahead and save all of them because um, 
in this public folder here I'm gonna add a new folder here and I'm gonna call it a data that's what it contains is data and then let's go ahead and add a subfolder called world let's say countries of the world world countries whatever you name you know you don't really have to it's just the data and in here I'm gonna add a file called countries and it's going to be a JSON file. We'll have a JSON data. With this. That's where we'll be fetching our JSON data from. And I have some sample data, some sample JSON data here. I'm going to grab this data. And the data structure is pretty simple. This is JSON here. We have a property called country code and a country name. This one, I wish this was uppercase because I want to follow because this one is uppercase. So, so okay. Right now, I'm not going to change it. As just leave the way it is. Okay, we have the simple JSON data. Okay. Okay. Now we have our data. Let's go. Let's go ahead into our JavaScript file. With HTTP, so we need to figure out. We need to now. Um, okay, so we need to somehow populate this guy, right? The countries. So how can we populate this? We need a we need a, a, a method here, right? We can write let's write a little private method called get all countries, and we're gonna pass the HTTP that we got from our controller, and we're gonna now we're just gonna say return. We're gonna call HTTP you know the Angular HTTP and call get method. And then we're gonna specify our, our URL where the data is found, and then we will have a callback function here like this. Let's say this comes response. Uh, we we can have two two of these. One to handle the you know success scenario. The second one is to handle the error. Like this. And do we have extra? Okay, here's a then first callback function here, and then second one, oh, because it's missing that. That's why it was complaining. Okay, let's give some uh, space for both of them. In this is just for now. If there is an error, there will error. We can just log that error just for now. Okay, this is. However, if the data comes out, we have to return that data to our caller, right? So simply say, going to say response dot data. Okay, this so we give this task of fetching the data to this private function. But however, now here we have to specify the location of our data. So the location of our data can be. Um, we are right here. So we when we do two dot, we come out into app folder. And then we can go one more that would put into JavaScript, and then finally we go into the the label of the data and the JavaScript exactly the same, and then we can do something like here is the data, and let's see the structure of our data folder, world countries. In countries.json. That's where our data reside. Okay. Now we have this private method. Now let's go ahead and invoke. We need to invoke that function so that we can um, we can use it, right? So how do we uh, invoke this function? We have this view model. Now we can say get all countries. That's the method, and this method expects HTTP object, and then and <laughs> we're gonna call that method. 
and then we the then method we will have this let's call it world all countries or whatever okay and this one ends here and once that all the data comes out we basically can assign that value to our view model property for countries goes to all countries okay this is all I think we have to do in, in our server-side code well <laughs> not really so in our JavaScript no, it is okay now um, let's modify our template here so what I'm going to do, I'm going to close everything here and then open this guy and let's also open this our template side by side so we can okay this one let's make it little title as S2 so this is going to be um, S2 here and let's create a little table because the ta table let's we're gonna put our table of data. We have a table, our first row of that table. And this table will have a two cell. The first one is a country code, and the second one would be country name. Let's just say country. Well, I'll just say country name, right? All right, and we're going to create a second row here. This this row um, basically copy this guy here. And as you might have guessed, we're just basically going to use here um, Angular binding syntax here, right? To curly braces. Oops. All right. And then of course here we have we will be we will have to use Angular uh, by, uh, Angular um, data bind right data binding syntax we say data ng as you might have guessed now we can ng repeat and we can say a country in bm dot I think this is the name of our properties is here yeah how do we yeah this is the countries here. And then the country has two uh, two property the country dot the country code and just grab this one here and the second property is the name of the country you know I have some country name I wish they were like the same naming convention in uppercase or lowercase but for some reason I got that data messed up so. Okay, let's go ahead and save everything here. If everything is good, and let me one more thing, let me make sure I have a reference to that JavaScript file um, in my main page component with HTTP. That is good. And then here, of course, now we have um, one more thing before I forget. Let me uh, close this, and let's close this HTML for now. This is this component name is component with HTTP. I think we changed that, so um, let's go ahead and use this one in our main page, in our HTML page. Okay, so component with HTTP and let's close our components let's save everything and let's refresh the page oh that's awesome okay see as you can see right now that doing that was pretty easy so let's go ahead and recap this one okay we can make this better using some you know bootstrap table CSS and it's, it's but like those things I just give the user the the you can make it better that's the that option is there right okay so let's recap what we did. Very first thing we did, we create a new file and we create a new component and it has its one template. 
and then we are uh, we we created our controller here in this controller we specify the dependency we had hey when this method is called we're going to pass this one as a dependency and controller as attribute to refer it as a bm from the template and this is our con con you know the, the controller here the con it's a pretty it's a very straightforward so idea about instead of writing these the property this is very nice approach because this has so many convoluted meaning in JavaScript, especially beginner programmers. You know, like if you don't know the context of this, then it, there is a lot of chances you might, so um, you know, stumble up. And so that's why it's always good practice to have a reference to this, to a local variable BM, and start using BM title, BM countries. And we define a little private method called get all countries to face the data. Our data, our JSON data, is inside this folder here. And then just this, when we call then method, it has a two function. One, when it becomes successful, the other one, if there is an issue comes up. So, and then finally, we basically call this method. Hey, here is call the data. When the data comes out from the server, basically anything that comes out here, set that value into our uh, properties, array of object. That is all we have to do. That was pretty, uh, Simple. All right, guys. Um, just one more thing I want to show you, just to make sure you know we can. It's always good to see what's going on here. Into uh, our network, and this XSRR tab is open. If I click here, as you can see right now, it fetches two data using XML HTTP request. One, the template, and the other one is actually data here. Okay. I hope you know this would definitely help people out there, you know, who is trying to learn this component feature and how to do dependency injection and all those things. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll be recording more videos. Okay, we'll be we'll be uh, learning about more advanced concept about uh, Angular component. Thank you so much guys for watching my videos.